So about three years ago, I was on a train in Sydney, and someone threatened to kill me. I should start this off by first saying that I ended up being physically unharmed, and I want to say that there should be some obvious content warnings here, so continue at your own risk. Now, I'm no stranger to death threats. In my street outreach that I've performed, and when I've run as a political candidate several times, I have gotten death threats. People yelling things across the road, people yelling how they'd like to kill me, or something like that. But never really a credible threat of violence. Never anything where I've actually felt like my life has been in danger. But this was the first time. So I was on a train in Sydney, on my way to see my partner, when I was in a pretty crowded train car. Pretty much every seat was taken. And there was a woman sitting behind me, who was basically muttering and yelling to herself about how she'd like to kill some people on the train, beat the f*** out of them. Um, at this point there was no credible threat of violence towards anyone, but uh, pretty disgusting behaviour regardless. She was talking about um, the how she hated the race and the gender and the sexual preferences and whatever, any, anything you can pretty much think of, any demographic, she probably called it out. Uh, just ranting at a few particular individuals, but kind of everyone in general. Just saying some really, like, disgusting, racist, homophobic, etc. stuff. So the train car was completely full, and no one was doing anything. And I thought to myself, well, someone should stand up and do something. Like, maybe there's some bystander effect going on here. No one's doing anything. She's calling out some particular people, We're probably making them uncomfortable. So at first I just turned around and said, that's enough, ma'am. Trying to be... Um, you know, somewhat diffuse the situation, but be kind of assertive. But then, as the train went on, she ended up being on the phone to someone and just talking about how she can't wait to get off the train and beat the out of certain people on the train. When I turned around and said, ma'am, that's not okay, stop. And that was kind of the last straw for her. She started screaming in my ear. So I was sitting in front of her. Um, she was sitting directly behind me, facing the same direction screaming into my ear, yelling about how she can't wait to kill me. She hopes that I get off at the same stop as her because she's going to bash my head in. She's going to kill me. Where do I live? I'm going to come find you. And so on and so on. At this point, I felt like for the first time in my life, it was a credible threat of violence, especially when she was basically spitting in my ear. Look, I froze. I didn't do very much of anything. I kind of just, I, I kept as alert as I could, maybe ready to defend myself but not reacting, I didn't know if... Um, well, look, I want to say that it, maybe I was trying not to escalate the situation any further, but the reality is I probably just froze. Uh, so let's not look too much into my the motivations of my actions. But no one did anything. There must have been at least 30 people. I don't know, maybe more. I don't know how full a fully loaded train car is in Sydney, on a Sydney train. Um, but at least 30 people who watched in silence and did nothing, didn't say anything, didn't do anything. And maybe, maybe that's, you know, maybe they were scared. Maybe they didn't want to be involved. Uh, I, don't, I don't blame them. I don't think they're bad people. I think at, at the time I was quite hurt and upset with, with their actions, but you know, it, it happens, I guess. But eventually after about 15 minutes of her yelling and spitting in my ear, she finally got off, challenged me to get off at the same stop as her, which I didn't obviously, it wasn't my stop anyway, but if it was, I wouldn't have gotten off at that stop. Uh, and she left. I, I now know that uh, if this kind of thing occurs, there are train guards, I think on every train, that you can contact using a speaker button somewhere on, the, on each train car. So I know what to do next time in the situation. If not at the, right then, then maybe when she gets off, gets off the train, I can press it. Um, so please keep that in mind if, uh, if, if something like this ever happens to you. Uh, at least in Sydney, I don't know how other trains work out elsewhere in the world. But I didn't really do anything, I kind of just was like on the verge of tears, trying to hold it in. One person said to me at the next stop as they got off, like, good on you for defending yourself, or speaking up for yourself or something to that effect. And I just kind of like hoarsely whispered thanks. But no one else did anything, said anything, nothing. <laughs> yeah, so look, it, it got me thinking a lot about bystander effect. I wondered to what extent can we blame this on bystander effect? Uh, is bystander effect even a real thing? Look, I'm going to segue in, in a minute into talking about bystander effect, kind of a, an interesting uh, hook for a video, but 
Um, look, I, I did want to talk about my experience a little bit because well, I wrote about it on my blog at, shortly after the time, but I haven't really spoken about it so much. So um, it feels kind of good, I guess, to get this off my chest and to talk about this a little. After this event, I thought about getting into martial arts or self-defense of some kind, and I did try boxing and I tried jujitsu for a short period of time. I lost some of the confidence I had about just being out in the world in public. I, I tried boxing and jujitsu, but ultimately neither of those really suited me. I felt they were quite challenging for me. I mean, I'm a rock climber. I'm no stranger to physical exertion, but I think there's something a little bit different about I'm <laughs> kind of having the kicked out of me. Look, I know obviously that's part of it and you can't really train properly at self-defense without those things. But for me at the time, I just, you know, eventually I kind of got over the initial shock of the and motivation of that moment, of that, that experience I had, um, and dropped those uh, and didn't really do much with self-defense after that. Let's talk about bystander effects now. I've always been aware of this and I've often tried to actively fight against bystander effect and use that as a motivation. Like whenever anything happens that I think somebody should call the police or call triple zero about or do something about, I try and always be the person in that situation who acts. I don't really trust other people to do anything. Uh, the first example of this was when I was on a bus and I saw two men outside the bus beating each other up. Pretty busy street, pretty busy bus. No one else did anything. So I called triple zero and told them about it because I, like, no one else was doing anything. And uh, I figured someone has to do. So that was kind of my first wake up call to think that I have to do something if, if no one else is going to. Uh, I don't trust that anyone else will do something. And there have been some other instances of where I have been the only person who's done something in these situations. So the idea of a bystander effect was first kind of brought up in 1964. Kitty Genovese in 1964 was on her way home from work when she was brutally stabbed, sexually assaulted and killed by a man. A number of people heard of this happening, being in a fairly uh, populated area and uh, seemingly no one uh, did anything, no one intervened, no one stopped, no one called the police until uh, one person after she died called the police. And the events went on for some time. Now, this has always been the original example of what people refer to when they talk about a bystander effect. And there has been a lot of psychological research on this since then, which seems to support the idea that the more bystanders there are, the less likely they are to do something now, interestingly, in 2016, the New York Times actually published an article saying that the events of this uh, incident weren't quite as stark as people thought. Supposedly, two bystanders actually did try and call the police as she was being assaulted. Because of this and of some other evidence, people have called into question the idea of a bystander effect. Now, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a sociologist, uh, I don't feel qualified to say on the balance of the evidence whether it does or doesn't exist. I'm aware that there is some evidence for and against. I, it seems to me, my impression is that there is more evidence for this effect being true to some extent. And that's all I'll say about that. So back to my situation, I've always had this idea that if a good person sees something bad happening, they should and will do something. That one Gillette ad comes to mind. Right way. Bro, not cool, not cool. But as a result of my experiences, I don't think that most people will do something in these situations. Now, I don't blame them, but I do wonder how can we get better at this? Because there's a lot of talk about just people saying that people in these situations should do the right thing. But that's all well and good, but how do we actually encourage that and help people to do that? Is it education? Is it teaching people more self-defense and just more general de-escalation techniques? Yeah, probably. I think de-escalation techniques should absolutely be taught more. I have some views on the current uh, curriculum for school students, uh, but I won't get into that here. But certainly there are some things that I uh, think would be more valuable to learn than uh, a third Shakespeare play. Anyway, I just think it's easy to talk about how people should do something in these situations, but they tend not to. So we need to fix something. Something has to change. We have to somehow encourage people to step up. Now I don't really know how to do that and I want to hear your thoughts because I think this is a problem. But the question is what would I have done if I was one of those other people in the train? I'd like to think that at the bare minimum I would have called the police. I'd like to think so. Anyway, thanks for listening.